Kafei Arizal, Kav Yashar, chapter 68 says that reciting Kriyat Shema Alamita is a great correction for the sin of wasting seed even while sleeping. A lot of people have this issue when they, Baruch Hashem, start doing Tshuva, but they don't do it on purpose, but they go to sleep and they have dreams, or sometimes even without a dream, they waste seed during their sleep. One of the ways that you can protect yourself, or at least help the scenario until your body heals along with your neshama from all of the years that you've made a sin is saying Kriyat Shema Alamita. Now a man should not say, after he reads about all of these warnings, that I transgress all of them, or some of them, but I still don't spill seed in vain. Because it's possible that some drops of semen come out of this person through his urine. And the words of our sages, may their memory be blessed, are holy and faithful. The Chidah says. So a person says, listen, I make some of these sins. I look here, I look there, I look everywhere I want, but uh, it doesn't affect me. I don't waste seed. He says, if you're looking, seed will come out of you. How? It'll come out in your urine. And I think of recent studies, scientific studies, Confirmed that there are actually some people that seed comes out even during their urinating. It's not every time, obviously. It all depends on a person. But if you don't watch your eyes, it's definitely coming out one way or the other. And it's a sin. It's not as grave of a sin as somebody doing it on purpose, but it's definitely not not a big deal. The Zohar Kadosh, as Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai says, that there's no sin in the world which creates and provokes more anger of the Almighty than the sin of neglecting the Brit. As it says in Leviticus chapter 26 verse 25, the sword that shall execute the vengeance of the covenant. The person weighs seed, he's bringing anger to the world, to his own personal life and to the nation Bichlar in general. A person that weighs seed, the image of God that was put on him, when he was created, immediately runs away from him. And the only thing that remains is the beast that's in him. He's considered at that moment a beast. And as long as he doesn't do tshuva, he is like the one who has no portion of the God of Israel, and it's forbidden to even talk to him. Says Zohar Chai, Parashat Vayechi, page 377b. Further, he becomes an evil beast. And on each and every hair of his beard, there are 80,000 demons posing themselves and calling him Tame, Tame, Tame. No, but I keep Shabbos. Tame. Yeah, but I learn Gemara once or twice a day. Tame. But I teach in a yeshiva. Tame. You wait, see, it's all going to the Sitra Achma. The Seder Ayom, page 37b, says it would have been better for him if he would have died in the womb. And he never would have emerged into the air of the world. It would have been better for him if his hands were cut off so that he would never commit this evil act. When a person understands the magnitude of the sin, he understands why the sages say it's better for this person to die. It's better for this person to never come to the world. It's better for this person to have mitam such horrible things he brings to the world. The Zohar Kadosh says in Parashat Vayechi, all the sins have repentance except for this. Which means that Sharet Tshuva are always open, but all of the other things that you're going to do Tshuva for, Hashem will help you. This Yat Bishmaya, that Hashem will help you do Tshuva for everything. Except this. You may see Tshuva is on your own. Which is the reason why the Rambam says to do Tshuva for wasting seed is the most difficult part of tshuva. To almost, it's almost impossible, almost impossible. Not impossible, almost. Meaning, you have to mamash be afraid, terrified, terrified of your own breed. Which, by the way, explains why many of the sages, practically all of them, were scared to go to sleep. They did not sleep because they had to learn all the time. They learned a lot about Hashem. But my Rav explained to me that the Arizal, the Gaon Mivinna, David Amelech himself, they weren't, they didn't want to go to sleep. They were tired just like you and me. They were scared to go to sleep. Scared to go to sleep. Why? Scared because sleep, you don't have full control of your body. Yeah, but it's not on purpose. Okay, it's not on purpose. It still creates damage. I didn't kill him on purpose. He still died. 
I didn't kill her on purpose. She still died. The outcome is the same. It's not that they didn't want to go to sleep. They were scared to go to sleep. David Amelech, his Yirat Shamaim, never allowed him to sleep more than 15 minutes. 15 minutes. The Grad, the Gaon Mivina, never slept more than two hours a day total. But he wouldn't sleep more than a half hour straight. Why? Never get into deep sleep. He's scared. I'm not recommending this, but this is to show you how much Yirat Shamaim they had from this sin. Accidental part, not on purpose. on purpose. We see in the Torah Kdosha that a minor is exempt from all punishment except this one. But we see that Eren Onan, the sons of Yehuda, were each seven years old. They sinned, Hashem killed them. This is a pasuk in the Torah. Before the written Torah came to the world, there were seven. Hashem killed them. Sharei Kedusha, part two, section six. A drop of seed is the secret of the 27 letters of the Torah. 22 Hebrew, or the Hebrew regular letters, and five final letters, or the Yotzofot. As it's written in the Kavanot of Tikkun Chatzot, now when a, when a person spills his seed in vain, he's not called a Rasha, he's called Ra. Rasha is wicked, Ra is evil. Ra has a numerical value of 270, meaning that when a person spills his seed, the damage is tenfold, tenfold of the 27 letters of the Hebrew alphabet.